Hi, it's Dr. Isom. Just going to give you a little mini lecture here on something that was covered in chapter five, the chapter on personality judgment. And this lecture is on the moderators of accuracy. When we are making judgment of other people's personalities. What are the things that we need to consider that can influence how accurate we are when judging other people? The first thing I want to cover is the, the term moderator variable, because all of these things that we're going to talk about are considered moderator variables. So what is a moderator variable? It is a third variable that affects the strength of the relationship between two other variables. So I talked about self-monitoring in class um, a couple, maybe a chapter or two ago. Self-monitoring is the extent to which a person changes or modifies their personality, maybe not their personality, but their be the expression of their personality and their behavior when they're in different settings. So if they're in a setting that requires them to be more reserved, like a funeral or a traditional classroom, then they tend to change their behavior, their outward behavior to fit that setting. Whereas if they're in a setting that is um, less structured, that it allows all kinds of different sorts of behavior, what we would call a weak situation, um, they feel more comfortable expressing themselves. Self-monitoring is a trait. It's normally distributed, like we think of all the traits. Some people are very high self-monitors, so they change their behavior like a, almost like a chameleon to fit the situation they're in, Where the, whereas there are other people that don't do that as much. They score lower in self-monitoring. And if you are a low self-monitor, or if you score low on that trait, then you don't tend to change the way you behave depending on the situation that you're in. Those kinds of people, the, the people who are lower in self-monitoring, those are, those are people that are easier to judge because they're just gonna be who they are across all situations. The ones that are high self-monitors are the ones that are more difficult to judge in terms of their, their personality. And because they're more difficult to judge, they're more difficult to predict how they're gonna behave in certain situations. So self-monitoring is one of those variables that influences or can affect your behavior. So if you were wanting to correlate a person's score in sociability or a group of people's score in sociability, their trait level of sociability with their behavior in, um, across different settings, then you might want to know how they would score on self-monitoring because knowing that would allow you to understand why some people might score very highly in sociability, for example, but when they're at a funeral, they really restrict that sociable behavior because they're self-monitoring, they're changing their behavior to fit the situation. Whereas somebody who would score low in self-monitoring, they, uh, they would tend to express their sociable behavior pretty similar to across other situations. So they are not sensitive to whether it's a weak or a strong situation. You're gonna be much more accurate in predicting someone's personality and judging someone's personality if they're a low self-monitorer because they're not going to change their personality to fit the setting. Okay, so what are the moderator variables, um, other ones that we need to consider when we're judging someone's accuracy. So these are variables that can influence how accurately we are able to judge a person's personality. They are the judge, so that's the person who's doing the personality judgment. The target, that's the person whose personality is being judged. The trait, that's the trait that you're judging the person on, whether it's sociability or neuroticism or agreeableness, for example. And then the information, and this just refers to what kind of information do you have to judge them? Do you, were you able to observe them for five minutes versus five hours? Were you able to observe them in multiple settings or just one setting? So I'll go through each one of these um, in detail. Okay, the first one is the judge. So again, this is the person who's doing the personality judgment. What makes a person a good judge? Well, it really depends on the trait that's being judged because some people are better at judging some traits than others, but it also depends on the characteristics or the personality of the judge. And people will argue sometimes that either men or women are a better judge of character. 
Now the research on that is mixed, but we do know that if you are a woman, the women with higher intelligence who would score higher on openness to experience and who have in general better social skills are better judges of people's personalities. So they are able to judge people's personality with much greater accuracy. For men, men who are not anxious, who do, would not score highly in neuroticism, who score low in neuroticism, who are also less concerned with, a, with what other people think of them, men who are higher in extroversion, um, and that would mean that they're more sociable, they have maybe better social skills, they tend to be better judges. So again, um, there's no definitive research on whether women or men are better, so we'll have to hold out on our judgment of that. The next variable is the target. So what makes somebody a good target? And remember the target is the person whose personality is being judged. In general, mentally healthy targets, um, it, it's ref they refer to it as psychologically well-adjusted and well-organized, and also targets that are more extroverted and agreeable are easier targets to judge. So to the extent the person's uh, mentally healthy and stable, sociable, and kind of a, an agreeable person, that person is going to be easier to judge than somebody who is more an in, of an introvert or who would score lower in agreeableness or who had mel, mental health issues that might make their behavior more erratic. The extent to where whether a target is easier to judge in terms of their personality is really related to how psychologically healthy they are and their level of subjective well-being or happiness. The next one is the trait itself. So I wouldn't refer to the good trait. Um, good traits to judge are ones that in general are more visible. So they are related or they produce behavior that is easier to see. So highly visible trait behavior would be someone who is being very sociable. You can watch them interact with other people or maybe um, aggressiveness and a really aggressive person. That's their behavior is something that you, it's easy for, to observe that it's easy, easy to spot the person who's aggressible, aggressible, aggressive. So in general traits that you're judging that are, that produce behavior that's easier to see. So that would make, so we could call those traits highly visible traits. Those are the ones that are easier to judge. Traits such as rumination or um, how resentful someone is, resentfulness or ruminativeness, those are easy to front. Those are um, people, things that people can have be traded for or have a, have a level of a trait, but then they can hide it. So the behavior that's associated with those traits is not one that is really that visible. So it's more difficult to judge those kinds of traits. The last one is the information. So what makes for good information? Um, well, it, it refers to the amount or the quantity for one thing. In general, more is better. So the more time you have to observe somebody's behavior across multiple um, situations, weak versus strong or unstructured versus structured, which I'll talk about uh, soon here, um, and the more observations, the number of times that you can observe their behavior, the more accurate you're going to be just because you have more information to make your judgment on. Other things that can, or other things that are related to this that can increase your accuracy are if you see a person or you observe them when they are stressed out or if they're in a situation that provokes an emotional response. Um, if you can get them to talk about their thoughts and their emotions and their feelings, you're going to be better at observing uh, what, they, what they're truly like, especially for um, traits that are related to emotion rather than just observing what they, how they go about their daily routine. You're not going to get as much information um, from just watching them interact and do their regular routine as you would from actually talking with them and observing them when they're expressing themselves. Viewing people in a, an unstructured, which we have learned in the past is also the same thing as a weak situation, will give you much more information usually than watching them in a structured situation. A structured situation we've also referred to as a strong situation. I'll talk about those more in just a minute. In general, the best information, 
as far as being able to accurately predict someone's personality is watching them or observing them in a situation that brings out the very trait that you want to judge. So for example, just an easy example is sociability. If you're wanting to judge how sociable a person is, you're going to get much more information to help in that judgment. If you observe them in a social setting, like at a party or in a group meeting, rather than if you were just observing them interacting with somebody one-on-one -on -one or just observing their behavior when they're by themselves. So um, the best setting or the best information can come from a situation that brings out what you were trying to judge, the traits that you were trying to judge. Just to review a little bit, strong versus, oops, strong versus weak, weak situations. Um, I really like this quote by Maya Angelou. She says, I've learned that you can tell a lot about a person by the way he or she handles these three things, a rainy day, lost luggage, and tangled Christmas tree lights. Now, all of those are situations that people could behave in a range of responses. Some people love rainy days. Some people um, can't stand them. They get bored. Lost luggage can set someone into a rage, or you know, they might just throw up their hands and say, well, there's nothing I can do about it. Situations that allow a range of responses are what we would call unstructured situations, We've learned those to be also called weak situations. A wide range of responses is possible in a weak or an unstructured situation. Structured situations or strong situations, those are situations in which people's behavior is, is uh, restricted somewhat because there tends to be strong social or cultural expectations for behavior that's appropriate you don't go to a funeral and burst out into a show tune because that's just not culturally appropriate for you know, our culture. So uh, what you need to consider then is if you want to really observe someone's personality and get a sense of what they're like, you're going to want to put them in an unstructured or weak situation if possible, because in an unstructured and weak situation, there's not going to be a lot of expectations for how they should behave. And so they will express themselves in a way that's consistent with what they're truly like. So you want to maximize your, your chance to observe them in an unstructured or weak situation. So again, I just want to wrap up. So the four moderator variables in, that can affect how accurately we can judge someone's personality are the judge, that's the person who's doing the judging, the target, that's who's being judged, the trait itself, that's the trait that you're judging, that could be multiple traits too, um, and the information, the amount or the type or kind of information that you're doing the judgment on. If it's truly important that you get an accurate observation or an accurate judgment of someone's personality, let's say you're trying to decide who to have as a roommate, or who you want to hire uh, for your business, or maybe who you want to get in a relationship with. You want to try and maximize your ability to accurately judge those traits or that person's personality um, by considering those four moderator variables. At, at the very least, um, if you want to know what someone's truly like on a date, for example, you would want to choose a date that puts you in a weak situation. So rather than going to a movie where you're expected to sit down and be quiet and not say anything, maybe you might want to go to a coffee shop or a park and that, um, that will be a, a situation where the person would feel more free to express their true personality. And then you'll get a better judge of what that person is truly like, a more accurate personality judgment. And that's it.